Welcome to movie three, the combination graph. Um, I want to get right into this one in this aspect. Um, first, uh, by via an apology, um, let me minimize this and go to the dollars and pounds web movie that I made if you're looking at this online. I'm going to click to an area of this um, movie which is showing just the graph in the screen and I apologize to you on how small it is inside the screen. Remember you always have the PDF file to look at. In this combination movie I will do my best to um, zoom in as close as I can to see different things but I do want to remind you of course in a silly way that you always have the PDF file to get back on this and see how close you need to get to it just to see how things look see how things react so the PDF file supports the movie the movie supports the PDF file so again please accept my apology I certainly didn't mean to um, get so small on it this combination graph is uh, I want to break it down for you real quick before we go into the actual graph itself let me close the dollars and pounds movie now here is the combination graph the way it looks and let me show you that I have my two pieces of artwork on the top which I will turn off and then I will build this back up as the first thing I did of course was finish off the graph all right it's a regular graph with a line version of the quarter totals and I just took a PSD file that I brought into Photoshop and did a few little manipulations to then I have an inner frame and an outer frame remember um, that you have the capability of taking a rectangle as a single stroke and let me click on that and going into the single stroke and let me make sure that I'm clicked on this and then you can click on it and when you have a single stroke and you want that stroke to be a gradient just go up to object path and outline that stroke but before you do duplicate it so that you can turn the inner frame as a smaller single line inside your outer line to get kind of a neat looking framed edge on your PSD file all right and it just kind of finishes it off nicely and then the graph of course goes inside and I tried to keep this in a um, in a in a similar tone flowing throughout to enhance it um, I, and you don't have to keep mine you don't have to do mine exactly the way that I did I'm just showing you my result and there's billions of different good looking results that you can use your own picture if you want to but the um, the file that I have back there I don't even remember the name of that file actually let's go see what it is the file that I have back there is um, where is my links pile links 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 there it is and that one is called coins PSD file so in the coins PSD file um, let's just close the links file right now and go back to working on it now let's break down the coins and I've made these into um, uh, uh, I have a, another layer that I want to show you because I want to break down the coins just exactly like the PDF file did. So let's go to the PDF file here and go right to the coins and get to them so I can talk about them because I don't want to build the coins for you here. All I want to do is show you what they're made of. The handout shows that they're just simply vertical lines and these vertical lines are clipped so nicely that it's just one frame of a clipping path that I'll show you how to do that one. Then I just built a gradient inside the same. I used the clipping path. I used this particular shape as the clipping path for the lines. So I'll show you that. And then this is just one, one piece of artwork down here and I'll get close to this even though it's going to be pixelated. This is just a smaller inside piece of artwork that I duplicated turned into a larger piece. So it actually has um, ends up looking like the shine spots and it um, uh, cuts right through those vertical lines that are over here to the right all right cuts right through those and gives the coins a beveled edge but basically all you do is one of these you end up doing one of these strokes and duplicating it and then you end up placing it all on top of this big rectangle thing and it gives you a nice looking coin the top is just a series of three ellipses one is a fill, one's a stroke, one's another fill that I just duplicated and I just kept maneuvering the gradients on them to give a little bit of varied shine 
on them. Now let's see a real good breakdown of that. And what I did here was I took my coins and duplicated it. So let me turn off the combination graph and turn on this layer 13, which I'll get rid of in a second. And again, I will promise that I'll try to get these as big on screen as I possibly can for you. Um, I'm going to open up layer 13 because I've already gotten it ready for things. Again, the top is just a series of one, two, and three ellipses. Let me turn off all these things that I've labeled coin sides and just uh, drag down to only show you the bottom one, which actually I'll show you the top one in a second. And then I'm going to turn off the bottom so that you can see that what I have here is just a large fill. Now, the large fill has an outer stroke. You can see it in my gradient palette over here that I did a bronze to a yellow to a white and then I kept the bronze varied over here on this side. Gives it a nice shine, almost like the chrome lettering we did when you did the lettering in guide three. All right. Now duplicate that and turn it into a clipping path. Now what do I mean by that? All you're going to do is take this clipping path that I'm going to click on and clip out a whole series of these long vertical bars. Now let me click up to the clipping group and go to object clipping mask and release so that you can see how I did this. Now what I would like to do is to just show you how I can take the M key, make a long vertical line just like this. And the only way that the, all you have to do is fill it with whatever you want to fill it with. Now that's just a rectangle. Let's take and fill it with any gradient that I can find here. As a matter of fact, I will actually they're just solid colors. So let's just click on a solid color. Let me see what this solid color is over here. It's actually let me just grab I'm sorry with the direct select tool. Let's click one of these. Uh, actually that is a fill. Okay, I'm gonna grab that one right there. Whoops, I gotta click this one down here. Okay, good. I grabbed that one. Oh, you know what this is? This is even simpler than I even drew. I couldn't remember because I'm old. Um, I didn't change any of these. All I did was draw one of these right here and then I grouped them and then I cascaded the same gradient across them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For a moment, let me just take this single little thing and add a stroke to it so you can see it. A real thin stroke, like 0.1 on the stroke, just so you can see it. So I'll go 0.1. Now, I'm going to duplicate it over to the right. So I don't care what side you start on, but if you hold command option and you drag to one side, look at how you can actually have the separation line right there. Now simply hit command D and keep on duplicating it all the way across. Now you have enough of these strokes that you can simply take the entire thing as a command G group, watch this, command G group, you can group them right up here into this group that I'm clicking on over here in the layer palette. Now, simply take and cascade, remove the stroke first and cascade the fill that's right there across them. Take the G key and drag this way across them and what you end up having is a beautiful cascading gradient across them. Now watch what you do. You simply take a copy of this clipping path right there and I will grab the clipping path and I'll duplicate it. I'll take the path that I've duplicated, I'll grab the E key and I'll move it over here just like this. Now I'll take that and put it above my group. So I take that path, look what I'm doing. I'm putting it way up here above that new group. I'm going to shift click on both items, the path and the group and hit command seven and command seven will clip it out exactly the way that I clipped it out before. And that will match this beautiful fill that I have underneath. So again, all you have to do, and let me now find where I put these things, let me take this group that I have and turn it off. Let me turn off the fill that's underneath here. Let's click on the group of those lines. Let's shift click on that clipping, that same um, tubular shape and hit command seven. And now look at how if you add that 
to your fill, you now have those lines that are really beautiful. And it ends up being the coin sides. Now, let's get to the coin side. So let me turn off these items um, right here and let me click one of the coin sides right there. Now, take that coin side. I'm going to turn the fill only on so you can see it where it is in relationship to where it was. I don't know if that made sense. So you can see where it fits onto my big, pretty um, colored stack, uh, the sides of my coins. Now look at how this is simply one stroke right there. Uh, let me lock up that. This is simply um, that would meaning this shape here. Let me click on the one here right there. Uh, let me make sure that that's unlocked. Um, let me go inside. No, they are not unlocked. Okay. Let me... Uh, let me click on the one here. Now, um, obviously I have black as my color and you can't really see them very well. So I'll turn this into blue for now and see if we can see it any better. But look, and I'm going to take the A key so you can see it better. That's one inside stroke. Let me get real close to the edge. Look at how that's an inside stroke. I duplicated it and I colored it for the bottom one. All they are are two strokes, a solid and a solid. Now take that coin side and simply click on it and then hold command option okay hold command option and duplicate it just like I did now watch what I'm gonna do all you have to do is keep on hitting command D to duplicate now look at how you can go all the way down if you go command D to duplicate once you get them done all you have to do, don't care about if it lines up on the bottom like this. Look at how it did not line up on the bottom. All you have to do is marquee the whole thing, just like that. Have them all selected. Hit the E key and get close to the bottom and now they will proportionately move their way up and look at how beautiful you can line them up to the bottom. A little bit higher, Brian. And look at how nicely you can line them up. Let me go even higher than I need. Whoops. You know what I'm doing? I'm moving the whole coin thing. Let me command Z back twice because I have to make sure that I've got the bottom locked up. For some reason, the bottom is not locked up. All right, let me um, recommand Z that back. Let me make sure this bottom thing is completely locked up. And let's see what we're doing here. Let's click on one of these. Let's click on one of these. I'm not going to mess around with this too long because I don't want to take the time. All right. Um, I should click on these right there and then click on this one down here and see how far away they are from each other. They are right there and they are right there. There, there it is right there. So if I click on this one and I shift click on all of these, I should only have the coin sides selected. I know it seems ridiculous, but I'm, I'm for some reason I'm getting something else underneath them and I just want to grab them all. So I'm going to go ahead and shift click on all of them. I've almost got them. I've only got four more to go. Three and four. Now, it should work. Let me take the E key and let's move this up. The bottom should not move and I should have that perfectly aligned. The only thing was is I had something else aligned or it's selected. So all of these together, let me turn off the bottom shape if I can, which is right there. All of those together, which I probably could have just turned this off and then marqueed the whole thing, which would have been fine. All of those together, you can proportionately transform them with the E key. So they line up beautiful. Now. All you have to do is turn on those lines. Look at how gorgeous that is. Now, take the three ellipses that you've added. Remember, I'm going to throw all this away. Take the three ellipses for the top that you've added, and you have the first ellipse with a little gradient cascading to one side. Let's click on it so you can see it. Then you have an inside line. Then you have another smaller inside ellipse. Together, the whole thing makes it look like a beautiful coin stack. Now, without taking too much more time, let me throw all that away. And you have your silver coin and you have your gold coin. Now, all you have to do is define those as a design. Now, let's get right to the graph. That was big, but it wasn't so big. And remember, you can always replay this movie and you can always um, uh, 
study the PDF file on how to do that. But Illustrator offers, especially with Command D, so many cool things. Now, let me go and show you how I've already got the graph completed just about, just to get us to this page on the assignment guide. Let me go back like this. Let's go back a page and go right to, no, wrong way, Brian, right to here. Okay, I am going to bring up the data window to show us exactly what we did. So take this data right there, input that data, and then follow what I said, making your graph seven by five, okay? And then hit the apply button. Now let's go back. Let me um, minus this a little bit here. Okay, now let's go to the next one. So the next page now gives us this um, graph that we have here. So I'm going to start in on number two on my page. So if you want to play with me on this, I'm going to go right to page eight, number two, and I'm going to go right to my graph and we can begin. So I'll click on the graph. Let me turn off the silver and gold coins uh, up there. Let's take and get this as big on screen as I can. Wrong way, Mr. Sorrell. Okay, that's that's good enough. And now let's take the um, A key and let's do what we need to do. Actually, the V key for now. So I'm gonna click, right hand click, and go to my data window. So please input all of this data and then have the graph looking the way that it is right now. Now, let's start on number two. Select the graph. It says double click the graph tool in the graph window, choose on right side from value axis. Now I'm gonna go down just, actually I'll try to leave it like this. So double click the graph, choose value axis. Let me read that again. Choose on, choose on right side from value axis. And now it says mark, make sure first column in front is checked, which it is, cluster 90, uh, and cluster width 80, so I have that perfect, okay? Choose left axis, so let's now go to left axis. So we go up here, I'm sorry, let's say what I, choose left, af left axis from graph side. I should have said left side. I'll have to change that in my PDF file. I can't believe I said that. Okay, choose left side. I'm gonna circle that just a second here. Okay, I have to make a change. Um, click override calculated values. Whoops. No, I think I did that right. Let's go on, let me go back. Right side from value axis. Now it wants me to go to, choose left axis from graph options. It should have just said value axis. That should say value axis. Check, click override calculated values, 0, 1,000, always find mistakes in my PDF file, and 8 on the divisions, tick marks to short, and tick marks per division, 0, and again, for the second time or third time, dollars in here. Now, it says um, choose right axis. You know what? That's fine, but that has to say on both sides. For me to have a left axis and a right axis, this has to be on both sides. That's what I have to change. Okay. All right. Let's start over on this. Um, on number two, I'm sorry, I have to make changes on my file. Okay. Um, let's cancel this. All right. Double click this. I've got to make it say on both sides. This needs to say on both sides. Now, I go to left axis, which that was correct. I'm going to mark OK on my PDF file. Choose left axis from graph, graph options. Click override calculated values. This goes in 1,000. And now this goes in 8. Got it. Tick marks to short. I wrote this thing. You think I could remember. And then dollars down here. This is good. Okay, dollars. All right, now let's go to right axis because you won't have left and right axis unless it's on both sides. Now it says override calculated values. Choose 1,000 in the min field and divisions of four over here. And then it says enter dollars in the prefix field again. And then tick marks to short. Both of them are tick marks to short. Great, click OK. Now we have them on both sides. Now what I say to you is, now your legend is in the way. So 
Um, on number two, on number three, it, it, it actually says the second graph is how it will appear. It says deselect the graph, graph, click twice on the quarter legend box for red with the group selection tool to isolate the quarter totals. All right, I don't want you to actually move anything yet. So I'm gonna take the direct selection tool, click once with the option key and twice on the quarter totals to isolate out the quarter totals. We're gonna move this away from where it was later. So now all we have to do is um, double click the graph tool and then it wants us to choose the line graph which is way over here and I'll hold this so you can see the word line appear and now that goes into the um, let me do that again one two Oops, wrong key. <laughs> A key, one. Oh, you know what? I didn't have them selected. I'm sorry, I didn't have them selected. So uh, what a great day this is. Let's go to line graph. And does it say for me to change anything? Um, red circle, OK. Double click the graph tool. Click, um, the, click the line graph button. Choose on right side would be helpful if I read my PDF file from value axis choose value axis and crash options to verify the edits in step one re-enter if necessary all right what I'm telling you there is um, if you need to go to value axis and check these to make sure they're right fine but they they were already right and then click OK now that should change into a line graph which it did very well now um, Let's go down to the third graph is how it will appear. Now, I've already moved the quarter total thing, so let's see what it says. The third graph is how it will appear after you clicked OK. Let me get this as big on screen as I can. If I go the right way, it would be helpful. OK, that's perfect. Now, the text is too large and crowded. Use the direct select tool. Select all the type in the graph. Use the group tool and click twice on the left dollar amounts and the whole column will select. OK, um, in that way you can change. OK, the, I'm saying the text is too big. Um, I also tell you on the second bulleted item, move the legend using the direct select tool to appear as the fourth graph. So. Before I do anything, let's get this stuff out of the way. First, I'm going to hit the V key and move this up a little bit on my screen. Then I'm going to use the direct select tool. I'm going to, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the little box right there. And then the shift key and click on this. And now you can see how I've got all of that selected. And I'm going to move. I better get closer. OK, you, I can't have any open points, so I need to click so that all of those points are actually closed so let's click on this let's shift click on this and shift click on this that was with the direct select tool so make sure all the points are solid on it that's what I did I just didn't get close enough now move the quarter totals down here now let's click this click this click this click this and then we can move those down and get them out of the way now I should be hitting save on the file and I wish you would too uh, where did my other ones go oh <laughs> they were all selected oh that's cute oh you know what I could have just done that no I did that right let's go one two, three, four. What the problem was, was the quarter totals were selected. I needed to let go, grab this, and now move them and not have the quarter totals selected. You always have to keep track of what you have selected and what you don't have selected, and you have to make sure all the points are selected. They're solid. And I don't mind making mistakes in front of you here on screen because Illustrator is nothing but mistakes. It's how you fix those mistakes and end up having something successful without panicking that makes everything worthwhile. Now, what I'm telling you over here, and I'm going to bring up the character palette so you can see what I'm going to do right there, is now you have to adjust the things the way you want. If you marquee all of these items right there, making sure only those are selected you can change the point size of those and make them more reasonable 
all right and that's what I'm talking about now if you don't like the 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 font if you don't like the character go ahead and change anything the way you want all right and make everything reasonable to the way you want now I don't care if you change the colors on things I don't care exactly how you approach anything but now the whole thing is too big so let's hit the V key click it and then we can take the scale tool and I can scale this down to about 80 percent and now I can take the V key and I can go up and put it in the middle of my screen and I can actually I'll um, scale it down a little bit more when I get it all finished so let's grab the whole thing put it down here I should be saving the file let's throw this down here and now let's leave the combination graph selected and go on to the next now the next page will show how to create the artwork for the coin since we've already done that let's go back up here turn on the coins and let's get ready to define them now I'm gonna skip on page 9 number 4 and I'm gonna go all the way down to number 6 actually number 7 where it says let's define both coin art as a new design so select the gold coin art in the outer rectangle box so let's get close on this to define that as what we need now I've already done this once but I'm gonna click it and you have to make sure and when you do this that remember you need that that boundary defining box that you did before so in this in the gold coins we need to define the whole box so that we can actually make this and if you look at your um, if you look at your picture on the bottom right hand side of the page there is how you need to actually place in um, let me go command zero on this and let's go to the coins and then let's get right down to here you see the boundary defining box how it touches the bottom but it gives you more room on the left right and top on this one you only need the boundary defining box you don't need the guide that goes through or across so let's go in over here and make sure you surround it okay with us all right I was just reading number um, and, and mine actually um, is correct on screen number six after your art is completed make sure you surround each gold coin art with a no fill no stroke rectangle make sure it is below the coin art in the layer palette so what you have to do is go back to your group and make sure that the whole thing is at the bottom of it um, I'm gonna go back to this one because this one was the one that I had already completely uh, gotten ready and let me go to the coin let me turn off the silver coin and go all the way down to the bottom here on the bottom of this is a um, boundary defining if I can find it is a boundary defining coin let me see where I put it um, actually I better do it on this one okay I'll go on this one and do it let's go to the silver coins hopefully I don't make an idiot out of myself let's go M key let's go like this and let's make a box to touch the bottom perfectly just like that with no stroke and no fill so let's go take away the fill let's actually see if it works now this path has to be inside the group but it has to be at the bottom of the group so with that selected let's go all the way to the bottom and yes it is in the bottom look at how though I have to put it inside the group and go just like this I actually think I might have it right there let me turn this off and click on this one yes I already had it right there it was the very bottom of it but what I want you to do in fact I'll throw that one away I made a new one there it is right there in my layer palette just make sure it is in the bottom of the group so to the silver one I have to do the same thing all right and I'll do that that's no big deal but let's go now way up to the top of the gold one turn on the silver one go to the silver one and I'll show you that at the bottom of the silver one I have a boundary defining box exactly like I asked you no fill no stroke now let's define those as part of the graph so let's go back up compress the silver coins click on the silver coins right there and let's go to object graph 
Design, click New Design, and let's rename the design as Silver. Now, in renaming the design as Silver, I now have a new Silver design. Let's click OK. Let's go click on the coins, the, the gold coins. With them selected, let's go to Object, Graph, Design. Let's go New Design and name it Gold. And now I have it all settled and now I can go take my graph that I have way down here and replace them. So all you have to do is take, and this time I'll use um, the, the A key, I'll use Company 2 as the gold coins. So let's go to um, hold the, um, you need the group tool. So click once on Company 2, click twice on Company 2, go to Object, Graph, Column. Now, I said, remember I told you I had more? Well, I'm going to click on the gold for Company 2 and click OK. Make sure Vertically Scaled and Rotate Legend Design is selected. And now you can see how that has nicely turned into the gold coins. Let's take, um, and don't panic if this shoots. Look at how the quarter totals Company 2 and Company 1 shot back up over on that side. Just move them down where they're supposed to go later. So let's go click on the other legend for the silver coins. Click once and click twice with the option key so that it's the group tool. Alright, don't click three times or you click the whole thing. Go to Object, Graph, Column, find where it says silver in here and it's down here. Okay, good. And there's your silver coins and click and now you have the silver coins in there. Now take all three of these items and place them back where they're supposed to go over there and then save your file. Now go do what I did before. I will go click on the combination graph, go find the artwork. So let's go place in the artwork for the graph. It's coins. Let's place them in Let's put them below everything, below the graph, below everything, and position it so that it looks good. And then I want you to take the time. You can scale it if you want. Position it exactly as you want. Let's turn off the silver coins on top and then scale it and then do what you need to do to it so that it fits beautifully. Now make yourself a rectangle. Convert with the, with the M key and then convert that single stroke into an outline path so that you can play the game correctly. Now obviously this has to move down. Obviously my entire graph in the V key has to move up. So let's take the graph and move it up. Now let's actually shrink the graph a little bit. Let's go to another 90% from what I did there so that it fits nicely. And then you can place the graph perfectly in there, left and right. And then I'll switch back to my other one. Here is the finish of the other one. Let's go back and show it. Just take your outer frame, inner frame, graph, and your little artwork. Let's turn on the silver coin so you can see them up there. And that is the finished product. I've already wasted too much time on this one, but I hope you can play it over and over again. And again, I am not afraid to make mistakes. And there is no way you're going to remember everything from start to finish. I actually set this one up about three months ago. And I probably should have gone through an entire run through, which I did do, but you can never anticipate all the mistakes. It's can you get through those mistakes and how do you perform when mistakes happen? If you traditionally, if you um, fundamentally train yourself in Illustrator, everything will be just fine. And you will be able to get through those mistakes. I don't think that looks too bad. Um, and have some fun in creating your, your artwork and play that artwork part over and over again. But don't, don't try to um, like do each of those vertical bars for the coins. Don't try to do each of those vertical bars separately. Just do one, duplicate it, those vertical little lines, and then group them and then cascade a gradient across the whole thing. I mean, that is such a fast way to do it. And then use the clipping path um, uh, capability to clip everything the way that you need to clip it without having to manually move and move points and have everything take so long. Uh, I'll see you on the next one, which is the baseball bat one, and I hope you enjoyed this one.